Alrighty, so today we are going to look at how to use your Vive Tracker to track um, the uh, focus or zoom of your camera. Like this. Mm. Really fun to play with. Um, uh, so I'll be covering how to use this sort of in a simplistic form for animations, as well as in a more complex form for doing uh, sort of tracking real life lenses as well. Uh, so it should be interesting. Um, however, I'll go into a bit more detail at the very end of the video, but this I would not recommend this for actual tracking a lens um, if in a production environment. And I'll, I'll sort of explain a bit more. But for if you just want to fiddle around with proof of concept or um, you're just doing sort of some animations without camera tracking and want to just use this as a... a more nicer way of zooming or focusing, then uh, yeah, it's perfect for that. Alrighty, so to do the Vive Tracker for the focus or um, zoom, uh, what we're going to do is just use the handy dandy Steam VR device tracked such and stop. Um, tracked device. I and um, get tracked valid position orientation. Alrighty, so um, I already know I set up this little fun, funky action to get the, so I already know it's three. Uh, and so next we come to what our orientation is. So um, the Vive has its prongs facing forward with the um, light upwards. That's how it's supposed to be mounted. And so that means the um, the Z axis is sort of through the light going up. The Y axis is left and right. So the X axis and forwarded back. And that's the axis you're most likely to mount it on a follow focus. So that is the axis we're going to be using. I need an invent tick. Alrighty, so the issue, however, is that it comes at, the Vive Tracker measures its rotation from negative 180 to 180 degrees. Um, and so it's a bit difficult to work with. Um, and so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a map range clamp node. Um, and we're just going to use this to change it from uh, that, which so negative 180, 180. Uh, and we're going to change it to 0 to 360. So we're not working with, you know, that's more the more common way of measuring the rotation around in a circle. It's sort of in 360 degrees. So our next problem is that this returns us a value between 0 and 360 degrees. Then once it does a complete rotation, it jumps back to 0 again and starts again, um, which... It's okay, I guess, if some, like the lens I have, the Cine lens I had access to for this test, um, it's, does, it's focus ring does a full 180 degrees, so half a spin, to go from uh, its closest focus distance to infinity. Um, some lenses, not that I can think of any off my the top of my head, but some lenses may go beyond that. Um, zooms... I can think of lenses with zooms that go beyond 360 degrees of spin. Um, don't use a kit lens for this with like those infinity focus ring things. It's just bad times all around. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this from an absolute value of something between 0 and 360 to a relative value. So it can be added to and taken away. So we can we can do like a 500, 500 degree turn, for example, and it'll show up fine. Um, so the way we're going to do that is very similar, um, except the only problem is, so it'd be similar to how we've done stuff with like the add relative location for things like the camera movement. Um, the only problem is we're not actually applying any of this to a physical object. So it's going to be a bit more mathy. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a variable, a float variable, which I've already done here. Um, I've just called it tracker rotation. We're going to get it like so. Uh, we are then, we need to sort of take the current tracker location away from our new tracker location um, to get sort of the distance in degrees it's moved. Now, you could do just a regular float minus a float. The problem is this sort of goes from 360 degrees down to zero degrees 
you know, like if, once you do a full circle, it goes from 360 back to zero or, or 359 to zero. Um, and so what the problem we get with that is a big jump. And so th that screws up the math. Uh, so what we're going to use is some math design specifically for circles, um, which is called a delta rotator in Unreal. So this is essentially going to minus, as you see, a normalized A minus B. And so this is uh, sort of minusing two rotators to each by each other uh, and creating a proper result because circles. Um, so I'm going to plug these into the X axis rolls. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you plug them all both into the same one and come out of the same one because um, everything else is going to be zero. Uh, we are then going to, this is going to be our, our new value. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another variable. Um, I'm going to call this one relative rotation. Rel. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure there's supposed to be an e there. Um, no, that looks even more wrong. You know what, we'll leave it with an A. Um, alrighty, and so we, what we're going to do is we're going to get that value now, like so, and we're going to add this value to it. So a float plus a float, rather easy. Like so. So what we end up with, oh, uh, and then we need to set these variables at some point. Um, now it's, it's important which one you do in what order. So the tracker rotation has to be set last in everything. Um, and then the relative rotation can be set before that. Whoops, set, whoops. My brain says set, but I keep clicking get. There we go. So we're gonna set that to that and then set that. Now, to s we're going to set this to the mapped value all the way down here, like so. So now an event tick fires, we get the, our tracked rotations X roll. Uh, we, we change it from the silly way Vive measures it to a regular measurement. Uh, we then take it away from the previous event ticks tracker rotation, which will give us a, you know, probably only like a, you know, negative three degrees, positive three degrees. We're then going to add that to our relative location. And then we're going to set the relative location. Then we're going to set the tracker rotation. Then it's going to fire again. We're going to go through it again. Like so. And so what we end up with is if I use a print string to demonstrate we just get our relative rotation now, get like so, compare, compile, save. We hit play, we're at eight degrees. And now if I keep spinning it, we're in negative territory and keep spinning it. And we've hit 360 and we're still going. 400 degrees, 500 degrees, six, seven, 20 there. I've just done two rotations. And so now we've just we've just mapped this so that we can do as many rotations as we want. I'm going to keep spinning it because I'm going to do four rotations in the other direction, like that. And so now we can spin it around. Around. Oh, just yanked out the charging cord for the Vive tracker. That's okay. Yeah. And so now we can spin it around as many times as we want. Oh, I hit the button on top. It's okay. They can do anything. So next we're going to look at how we use that. So, all hunky dory. Um, oh, so um, before we look at how we're gonna use that, we need a way of calibrating that. Um, so, and uh, it'll make more sense. It's probably less necessary for if you're controlling it without tracking an actual lens, but it is more important if you're tracking an actual lens. Uh, so we're gonna just create an actual mapping. I'm gonna call it reset tracker rotation. Um, I'm just gonna make it the space bar like so. Um, this is really simple code. We just type reset tracker rotation and we get our relative rotation and we set it to zero. Amazing. 
So now when we hit play, so it's at 26, I hit space, now it's at zero. E, Z. So first we're gonna look at how we can map this to um, sort of a focal length or a focus um, outside of tracking an actual camera and then, so skip ahead a bit, I'll put somewhere how far you need to skip ahead uh, to map it to a real value. Um, so to do it for a uh, fake, value, we're going to start with the folk, folk, um, focal length, I can't speak, um, did I take a, I'm just looking at my notes, I, sorry I took a, yeah, thought so, alrighty, um, so it's rather simple, what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to delete this track, this string, but we'll come back to it. Um, so we just need another map range clamped as well as a set focal length node. Uh, so untick context, context sensitive find it. Uh, so reference your camera in the favorite way you like to reference it uh, and grab your map range clamp. So the way this works is in the input for range A, leave it as zero. For range B, you want to set how many rotations it takes you to go through the whole, you know, zoom from zoom in to zoom out, how much rotation you want. So uh, I'm going to do 720 degrees because I want it to go. So I want it to go from my most zoomed out to my most zoomed in in two rotations. Next in the out range A and out range B, all we need to do is we need to set our minimum maximum focal length. So common lens 18 to 135, for example. So what we're going to do is in 720 degrees, we're going to go from 18 to 135 degrees. And then that's it. So we hit play and then I just spin it around and then turn it back in. Feels really weird being able to do this. There you go, that's 135 and then back out again. So for such a short amount of lens, uh, maybe two rotations is too much. And so that's how you do focal length. That's one of the simplest, uh, no, it is the simplest zoom setup I think ever. <laughs> that I've done at least. Um, so next we're gonna have a look at focus. And so to do focus, we need the set focus setting node. Um, setting, set focus settings. And it is going to be the exact same thing. I don't know why I deleted the um, everything else. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it's manual and focus distance. Then we're gonna do the same thing, map range clamped. And yeah, I should not have deleted it. Uh, tracker, relative rotation, that's what we want. And same thing again, leave the first one at zero. This is gonna be how many rotations to complete the whole thing. So 720, so two rotations. Uh, my minimum focus distance. Now these are going to be in centimeters. So keep that in mind. So one centimeter seems, uh, no, no, I do have a macro lens, so that's below one centimeter. Uh, and below like a thousand, which is, I don't actually know what, well, we've got to give it a target. I don't know what infinity is on the Unreal camera. Could probably, it's probably a mathematical way of calculating it. And so now, exact same thing. As I twist it, I'm gonna get in and out of focus. Oh, that chair's not in focus. There we go. Easy peasy. So now comes the not so easy, not so peasy. How do I do this for a real life lens? Well, I have a Cine Prime lens on hand uh, and we are going to look at how we can map that to the lens. So the first thing to note is a lens, if both for zoom and focus, doesn't work in a linear value. It doesn't go from, you know, one, you know, all the way out to, to in, well, it's infinity on it. So that's a big giveaway, but you know, it's gonna, most of them, you know, you, you twist it f at the start and it's going to focus sort of a shorter amount and then it's slowly focused more and more. It's the best way 
I can explain it. It's a, uh, it's not a logarithmic curve, but it looks a lot like, it's not a linear curve either. Um, you know, it's, uh, so what we're going to be doing is looking at how to map that curve. Um, so this will be the same for, I'm only going to demo it because it's it's a prime, so I can't do zoom on it, but it's the exact same method for um, if it was, if you're mapping zoom instead of focus. Um, and so what we need for that is a notepad because we're going to take some notes. Um, so Unreal works in the metric system. So if you don't, if your lens has metric on it, I believe most do, uh, use that. So my lens has, um, starting at the bottom, so starting at the bottom, it has 0 0.2 meters, 0 0.25 meters, 0 0.3 meters, 0 0.5 meters, 1 meter, and infinity. Uh, my keyboard does not have the infinity sign on it. And my involved keep track keeps um, infinity. <laughs> Maybe I'll Photoshop an 8 to the side. All right, so jot down all your all the markings on the lens. Uh, next, what we're going to do is take our what we had originally. So with the print string, so we're then going to measure the relative location, like so. So we're going to measure what rotation on the Vive tracker matches with what lens position. Um, so if I hit play. Um, can I open? So what you want to do is set it to your smallest focal distance. Uh, so mine's point two. Actually, apparently mine's not moving at all. Of course, the folder focus screws up. Um, alrighty. So set it to your smallest focal amount, which is mine's 0.2, and and sort of calibrate it to zero. Um, and so it's going to be really easy to start with zero. Now just move through each of your lens position or focus positions or lens zoom amounts um, and measure the rotation. So 0 0.25 is 80. 7, 88, 0 0.3 is 120, 0 0.5 is 190, 1 is 200 and 20 and infinity is a uh, 260 and make sure you measure so obviously a lens's sort of plane of focus is increased as your um, aperture or in my case because it's any one a t-stop is increased but so make sure that you're measuring it at the exact center so as if you had had your your lens at its widest aperture um, and so just like that now we can stop and so you're probably thinking why not why reset it every time uh, that's because if you're for whatever reason your lens skips even one gear um, then it's going to be completely out so the the idea of resetting it to zero so that every time you start um, is just handy to make sure it's always in track now, next, what we need to do is make a curve value for this. Um, and so what we do is we just go miscellaneous uh, and curve. And we want a float curve, that one. Um, so you can make these for multiple lenses. Um, I'm 
just I only got one lens um, so it'd probably be worth doing for all your lenses um, although I'll get into why this setup probably isn't as great actually I'll probably say it in the intro which I haven't recorded I don't record till the end of the tutorial uh, my lens focus curve like so now um, is this still playing why did it say the blueprint was running okay so I'm gonna put this on the other screen so but you've seen the values oops I just closed everything um, my bad uh, there we go all right so remembering that unreal deals in centimeters um, and my lens is in meters so just keep that in mind so I put 0.2 of a centimeter down because it's not going to work uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to right click the curve or at the moment it's just flat uh, and we're going to add a key and we're going to add all the keys we just did uh, so for the first value the x value is going to be our rotation in degrees uh, so the first one we did was zero degrees because we calibrated it um, and the focus distance is in centimeters so it was on the lens it was 0 0.2 meters which is going to be 20 centimeters and then we hit okay and you're gonna to have to zoom out a bit there we go and so go along and add all the points so i'm going to add another one so the next one was at 88 degrees 88 oh gosh just two eights um and that one was for 25 centimeters uh, we're going to add another one that was at 128 degrees and it was for 30 centimeters. Probably got the picture. We had 190 degrees for 50 centimeters. And 220 degrees for 100 centimeters so you can start to see it's not logarithmic but it's like an exponential curve um, the last one was infinity which was 260 um, again I don't actually I'm gonna set it to a thousand I think because I don't actually know what Unreal's camera's infinity is but holy crap um, <laughs> there we go thousand seems a bit a hundred? Oh wait, we've already done a hundred. Maybe a thousand. I'm gonna go 250 because it's excessive. There we go, that looks a bit less excessive. Um, like so. So we've got a very jagged curve with these hard edges. So what you can do is we'll switch it to auto. It's not perfect. We got these lumps. Um, so we're just gonna even out the lumps a bit. We don't want lumpy curves like so. Um, and so you can experiment with the curve to make sure it matches with your lens or um, if you could even find, I don't know, I could not find one for the lens we had, but it's uh, sort of a cheaper cine lens, if there's such a thing. You know, if you could find, I don't know if they distribute them, that they might distribute um, the, the curve of the lens focus, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you could if you wanted more points so the more points you have the more accurate it is so we're just using the points that are already on the lens uh, but you could literally grab a tape measure put little markers every meter or so and then measure exactly where each one comes into focus if you want it to be spot on um, but th yeah there's some inherent problems with the vibe that makes it not ideal for this situation anyway so once you've made your curve you can just save that and we need to create a variable for that curve so we're going to call it um, my lens uh, focus curve like so uh, and I'm going to switch it so I'm going to switch it to a curve and so under curve float we want an object reference so and when we compile it we get this down here which we can then choose uh, and so I want my lens curve now we can do exactly the same thing we just did for the focus or um, focal length or focus um, uh, what do i want to set focus settings Ooh, i 
do not like this keyboard. Uh, set focus setting. Uh, except what we're going to be doing is we're going to be substituting the mapping node for the curve um, node, which is called a, please tell me, so I curve, get curve float value. <laughs> Fantastically named, don't, would never guess what that actually was. Um, Oh, I forgot the make focus settings. That's why I'm not looking for this. So, holy moly. There we go. And plug that into there. And then we simply need to reference our curve uh, and plug it into there. And now, so whatever the mount, get a cine camera as well, it wants everything. So whatever the value is coming in, it's then going to map that to um, the curve. So to then use this, all we need to do is hit play, move this to its um, smallest focal uh, focus distance. So for us, it was 0 0.2. Hit space on the keyboard to calibrate. And now as we turn it, everything comes into focus. Which and now it should, yeah, well it does, it map, matches at least what the manufacturer says the lens should be. Again, if you wanted something really accurate, you could pull out the tape measure, but this is more of a demonstration. Did the tracker go to sleep? Oh, there we go. No idea why this is so entertaining. And so again, it's the same thing uh, just substitute this and this for a set focal length if you did the zoom. Uh, otherwise, it would literally be, it'd look like that. Easy peasy. So the last thing I'm going to look at is um, this inherent problem with the Vive, why it doesn't quite work. Um, and to demonstrate that, I am going to go all the way over to this value here uh, and use a print string. And that was in the wrong thing. This is the Vive perfectly still. Like I can even, I'll, I'll rip it off the follow focus and stick it on my desk for more illustration purposes. As you can see, it is jumping in some cases about, oh, sorry there, it's here, there we go, there, yeah, so as you can see, it's jumping in some cases up to a degree in rotation, and this is how the Vive works. So the Vive uses its base stations to get its location. Um, however, for rotation, it's a lot easier to get it through what's called an IMU, or an inertia movement unit, I think. Um, essentially, in that, it has some gyroscopes and some accelerometers in this. And the gyroscopes, same thing in your phone that sort of flicks it to the portrait or landscape mode, uh, measures rotation. But they are noisy. <laughs> And now Vive's done some things to try and fix that, uh, but they are still inherently noisy. As you can see, they're jittering all over the place, which is why this is probably not your most accurate measurement. A potentiometer, uh, which is an electronic dev electronical device, uh, would be much more accurate at measuring the value because they don't have an inherent jitter to them than the Vive does. So this is a nice proof of concept um, and if you're looking for just using this in sort of your little animations and stuff, you know, we can, you can do exactly what we did with the um, smooth, smoothness, the original one, so a lerp node, uh, to just smooth out that a bit. Here it is. So if I take it, uh, that one, actually I'll take that one, that one, that one and then give it that one. And so, you know, if I throw a lerp in here, um, and then hit play, I'm gonna get a somewhat smoother 
apparently not that much smoother. Um, you know, but we can get a more smooth result out of it that way. However, you can't really do that for a um, lens tracking because it's, you know, we we're missing, you know, we, we're sort of affecting the data. We're not getting the actual data out of it. Um, and so this is why the system like this probably isn't going to work as well for actual lens tracking. And so a, a different system that uses sort of, rather than an IMU to measure its rotation, an actual device designed for measuring rotation, such as a potentiometer, or I don't know what the Stipe and all those other lens encoders use, but it's, it'll be some more physical uh, device for measuring a lens, a rotation, and that's going to get you a much better result. Um, yeah. So the last thing I'm also going to mention is, uh, much as I hate to do this, I have a Patreon now. Um, I'm not going to talk much about it, but uh, uh, the link is in the description. And the reason you may want to subscribe to it is because all the tutorial files get uploaded afterwards. So if you want to just download the tutorial file and go from there instead of listening to my droning voice, then you can do that. Awesome.